Defining names in Excel can improve efficiency by making formulas quicker and easier to write and maintain. There are a few different types of defined names which I'll cover in this video, and I'll share a powerful shortcut that not many people know, which gets around a problem often caused when copying sheets with existing names, so be sure to watch to the end. There are four types of named ranges you can define, including a cell, a range of cells, a named constant, and a named formula. To illustrate, I've got some data here that I want to convert from US dollars into Australian dollars. In cell D4, I've got the exchange rate that I'll reference in my formulas, and I can give this a name. Clicking in the name box, I can simply type in the name that I want to give this cell. We'll call it FX rate. Press enter, and the name is defined. Now I can reference this cell by its name in a formula to convert the US dollars to Australian dollars. Tab to accept it, press enter, and double click to copy it down. Now I don't need to absolute reference the name because this is implied. I can simply double click, copy it down, and it always references that name. We don't need the formula in this cell, so let's delete that. Now, if I need to update the FX rate, it's easily done by typing in this cell here. So I can change it to $1.2963. You can see it automatically updates all of these cells here, picking up the new rate. Now I can also name a range of cells. For example, I could give this column here, the cells containing the US dollar amounts, the name US sales. And then I can reference this range in a formula. So let's say I want to sum US sales. I simply use the name instead of the cell references. You can see it's returning that range. Press enter and I get my result. Now when I come back to this formula in months down the track, I can see at a glance what it's summing. And obviously this is even more important when the formula isn't adjacent to the cells it's referencing. If you have a table of data with column and or row headers, you can quickly define names by selecting the table, including those headers, and then on the formulas tab, create from selection. Here you can choose the values you want names created for. In my case, I want the top row for the regions and the left column for the quarters. Click OK. And then if we open the name manager and I'll sort it by refers to, you can see here are my names that it's created. One for each of the regions and one for each of the quarters and one for the table itself. Now notice the quarter names have an underscore appended to the end, and this is because names cannot be the same as cell references. So Excel differentiates them to avoid naming conflicts. Going back to the exchange rate example, instead of entering the exchange rate in a cell, we can define a named constant. You can do this via the formulas tab and then define name. I'll give it the name FX constant. And that's because I already have a name FX rate, but you give it a more user friendly name than that. And then in the refers to, I can simply enter the value. So let's give it 1.2963, click OK. And then I can reference it in the same way I did for the name cell. So for example, I can sum US sales times FX constant, close parentheses on sum, and there's my formula that references the named constant. Now, if I needed to update that rate, I can simply go into the name manager and edit it here. So for example, I can say equals 1.3289. Yes, I want to save changes and it's updated. Now, in this example, I only have one formula using this name, but you can imagine if you have this name in use in many formulas, it's much quicker to update the rate in one place and all the formulas automatically pick up the new rate. Now the last type of name we can create is a named formula. Again, we do this via the formulas tab and then define name. It's picked up the name from column C and that's perfect. That's the name I want to give it. Now in the refers to, I simply type in my formula. So I'm going to say sum. And if you can't remember the defined names that you want to reference, you can use the keyboard shortcut F3 to bring up the list of names and you can choose from that. So here I want to take the US sales, so double click, times, and then F3 again to bring up the list, the FX rate. Close parentheses on sum, click OK, and now I can reference that name. So I want US sales in AUD, that's my named formula, and there it is there. And if we sum this column here, you'll see that those figures match. 
Now you can also nest name formulas in other functions, just as you might if you'd entered the formula in the cell itself. Now we can edit names in the name manager on the formulas tab and then name manager. By the way, the shortcut key for opening the name manager is control F3. For example, if I need to change the FX rate, I simply do it here. Let's sort them by name. There it is there. So I can type in a new rate. So let's make it the same as the one we've got in cell D4, 1.2963. I can click the check to commit that and close. And you can see this formula has updated because it's using the name I just updated. Now, when you define a name, you can specify the scope of that name to the workbook or a specific worksheet. So you can see here, we've got workbook or we can choose one of the sheets in the file. Now by default, it's going to assign the scope as workbook level. And that means it can be referenced in a formula on any worksheet in the workbook. Whereas names with a specific worksheet level scope can only be referenced from the sheet to which the name is assigned, unless you qualify the name by preceding it with the worksheet name. So let's go ahead and set up a name with a specific scope. So here I'm just going to put in a value 1500 and we'll define a name. We'll call this AU sales. And here I'm going to give it the scope of sheet one. Click OK. Now I can reference that here, AU sales. But if I wanted to reference it, say on sheet three, you can see it doesn't come up in the autocomplete list. Here, I have to fully qualify it. So I have to reference the sheet name and the defined name. So it would be sheet one, exclamation mark, and then AU sales. And now it returns the value. Now, if your sheet names have spaces in them, then you need to wrap the sheet name in a single quote like that. Now by default names are created with a workbook level scope as I mentioned. However, if you copy a sheet that already contains names, you're going to inadvertently create duplicate names and these will have worksheet level scope. For example, let's say I have an exchange rate here and I want to call this FX rate. I couldn't do it by just naming it up here. It takes me to the cell called FX rate. Let's go back here and we'll go in and define a name. We'll call it FX rate. And we're going to give it the scope of sheet three. So now we have two FX rates, one that's scoped just to sheet three and one that has workbook level scope. Now, if you reference the name that's set up for both local and global scope, so let's go to sheet one and type in FX rate. It's going to give me the rate that has the workbook level scope. And that's here, the first one we set up. However, if I were to reference the name on the sheet that has worksheet level scope, so let's reference FX rate. Here you can see I have two options, the worksheet level or the workbook level. So let's choose the worksheet rate. And you can see it's returning this cell here. Alternatively, I can choose workbook level rate. And you can see there it qualifies it by giving it the file name before the defined name. Press enter and it returns the global names value. In my former life as an accountant, one of our jobs was to collate the global budget for the IT department. And this meant gathering figures in each country's local currency and then converting it into GBP for reporting the consolidated budget. Now each sheet would have a named cell for the FX rate. We could either make each name unique and retain global scopes. So if we look in the name manager, you can see here, each name is unique and each name has the scope of the workbook. That is global scope. Or we could limit the scope to that of the worksheet and use the same name. It was easier to remember. The downside of both of these options is that you could end up with a massive list of names and if you only require local scope, then there's a more efficient way. Now, one way is to define name constants for each FX rate. Again, you're going to have multiple constants named in your name manager. But if you prefer to store the rate in a cell, then there's a more efficient way using a named range shortcut. 
Let's take a look in a new workbook. So here I've got three sheets, one for each currency, and we have a different rate in cell B2 of each sheet. I'm going to define a name and we're just going to call it FX. And here, instead of having the sheet name in the refers to, I'm going to delete everything, but leave the exclamation mark. So you can see it's equals exclamation mark and then cell B2. Remember the rate on each sheet is in cell B2. So it's the same in every sheet. I'll click OK. And now this named range exists locally on every worksheet in the file, but only once in the name manager. So I can reference it here equals FX and it returns the value for the AUD sheet. Again, equals FX and it returns the Euro rate. And lastly, equals FX returns the US dollar rate. So with this approach, I can set up the first sheet and then I can copy it, just holding down control and left clicking and dragging. We'll call this New Zealand dollars and let's change the rate to 0.7239. So now we have the rate for New Zealand dollars. If we look in the name manager, I haven't duplicated the name. It's just in there once. And I haven't had to go around and actually manually name this cell. So it avoids the duplicate name error you get when you copy sheets with defined names in them. Now, when you reference the FX name in a formula, it has local scope as we've seen. And that means the exclamation mark has the same effect as qualifying the sheet name to that of the local sheet containing the formula. However, it also means the name can't be referenced globally. So if I were to say add a summary sheet, I couldn't reference FX to a specific sheet. You can see here it's return zero because cell B2 on this sheet is empty. You also can't select it from the name list. It simply doesn't appear. I hope you found this tutorial useful. You can download the Excel file for this lesson from the link here. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more. And why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful. Thanks for watching.